effects on currency trades. Okay, now in this module, we're going to talk about smart money accumulation and distribution, fundamentally speaking. And that comes by way of our understanding and hopefully your acceptance to the fact that interest rates are the single most influential driving force behind market moves. Understanding interest rate shifts and changes can assist you in selecting trades. Technical analysis and key interest rates can unlock professional money management movement. Technical analysis of key interest rates can unlock professional money movement. Interest rate triads provide a visual depiction of smart money accumulation and distribution. All right, so what are interest rate triads? Well, you have to start with a 30-year bond, which is the key long-term interest rate benchmark. The 10-year note, which is an intermediate term interest rate. And the 5-year note, which is a short-term interest rate. Now these three interest rate markets are all futures markets. Okay, they're, they're traded on the futures market exchanges. And by looking at the price action of these three in relationship to one another, it will unlock a lot of the things that most of the time evade you when you're looking for price action type setups. But overlaying or comparative analysis on these three interest rates unlocks price action. Failure swings at opportunistic times can validate institutional order flow. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, in the very first teaching of this mentorship, the whole content delivery of September of 2016, I gave you specific things to focus on. Those things that we talked about in September are going to be amplified and be able to highlight much more probable trade scenarios after going through this particular module. Okay, so what is smart money look like in price? What's it look like? How do you know when smart money is moving in, in, the, in the marketplace? Well, first, let's take a look at what it looks like in bearish conditions. Obviously, there has to be some diametrically opposed view. And you have to start by looking at a base asset or benchmark. And in bearish conditions, uh, that base asset or benchmark would be making higher highs. Now, the, the base asset or benchmark could be the Dow Jones Industrial if we're trading stocks. It could be the dollar index if we're trading currencies. Uh, it could be the CRB index if we're trading commodities. The smart money distribution can be seen by comparable assets that are closely correlated that are making lower highs. The reason why this is occurring is because the smart money is heavily distributing while the base asset or benchmark is moving higher. The public or less informed traders will be looking at the market making higher highs, for instance, on like the Dow Jones Industrial. Uh, they will attribute that as this is underlying strength, so therefore the market should keep going higher. But if the general market averages start making lower highs, that's actually indicating there's smart money distribution underway. And it's not new buying that's sending the price higher, but heavy distribution. In bullish conditions, the opposite is seen. You have to have obviously a base asset or benchmark to compare and assume that the base asset or benchmark is moving lower. And it's going to be forming lower lows. And smart money accumulation will be seen with that condition being met with higher lows. And again, using the analogy that we just used a minute ago, assuming that the base asset or benchmark is the Dow Jones Industrial, it could be making lower lows. And by all standards, looking at it, the public or less informed traders would attribute that as underlying weakness. So therefore, stock should be continually going lower. But a closer look, we'll see that some stocks are not making lower lows. And that is showing a graphic depiction or visual representation of smart money accumulation because those stocks will be making higher lows. And the reason why this is occurring is because if they're heavily buying 
the price will not be permitted to go lower because that is the, the basis of supply and demand. If there is a high demand for something, it doesn't go on discount. It goes at a steady or higher price and many times at a higher price. So to accumulate or buy more of that, it will be forced upon the buyer to pay a premium on it. It will not ever go, it won't ever go to a discount. And the opposite is seen with the bearish conditions. When the underlying base asset or benchmark is moving higher, the reason why that heavy distribution is taking place is because they're selling it. They don't want to hold on to it for higher prices because their view from a smart money's perspective is this recent rally higher on the base asset or benchmark, or in this case would be represented by an example like the Dow Jones. Just because the Dow Jones is making higher highs doesn't mean always that's underlying strength. It could be just a heavy distribution cycle. And you'll see that with heavy numbers of stocks failing to make higher highs. Or the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ composite index may be failing to make a higher high. And when that happens, that is a warning sign that you're probably in a distribution cycle. Okay, interest rate triad. Again, we start with the 30-year Treasury bond market, the 10-year note, and the 5-year note. Okay, by overlaying these three markets, you'll be able to highlight when accumulation and distribution is in the interest rate market. And when this takes place, it represents smart money movement, or how you as a trader can view smart money in the form of seeing where accumulation in buying or distribution and selling is actually occurring in the marketplace. The three interest rates should confirm each higher high or lower low at moments when the U.S. dollar index is at a significant price point. Failure swings highlight smart money participation in the markets and trading opportunities are validated. For instance, let's look at the top we see this graphic depiction. Now, this could be the 30-year Treasury, or it could be the 10-year, or it could be the 5-year. There's no demand on either one of these three um, being the failed low or low. You just need one to break that pattern of moving lower. And when that happens, it invariably will show smart money participation in the marketplace. Because large volumes will be moving by way of their entries and exits, it causes that real supply and demand factor to take place in pricing. So therefore, the model will show underlying strength in one of the interest rates. In other words, they won't make a lower low. The one on the bottom most obviously makes a lower low, just like the one on the top graphically. But the one in the middle that's highlighted in blue, that is representing a failure swing. So when that happens, what we're seeing is that there's an interest rate shift. So there's going to be a shift in the marketplace. And if this occurs at a moment when you're identifying a potential institutional order reference point or focal point in the U.S. dollar index, that confirms that particular idea. For instance, if you're looking for a bullish order block on the dollar index, if you're looking for a buy at a bullish order block or su supposed support to come into the marketplace for the dollar index, you would see a opposite of this indication here. It would see a higher high, probably on two of the interest rates, but a lower high on one of them. And what that would do is it would confirm the bullish order block for the dollar index. Okay, so when you're looking at the interest rate markets, now every chart I'm showing you here, you can get this at barchart.com. It's free. It doesn't cost you any money to get that, that charting service from them. Now, looking at the chart like this, it's, it's not easily ascertained what it is it's supposed to be telling you. And this is the reason why it evades majority. Simply because we can show a chart plotting the open, high, low, and close on these specific interest rate markets doesn't always indicate understanding. And specifically, Going through the 30-year, the 10-year, and the 5-year like we just did, having these on your charts, your analysis of the markets, if you break them down in the right manner, just simply having a chart doesn't do it. 
It's not found with uh, you know, your traditional uh, technical analysis. So you have to look at things on a comparative basis. Okay. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a closer look and we'll look at this move in the dollar index. that just took place the week of this recording. You see the dollar index came down into that 99.50 level and had an aggressive rally away. We talked about the dollar being bullish in this area and the market moved higher all week as a response to that strong move off of 99.50 level. But if we go back and look at the interest rate market, and okay, this is the 30 year treasury bond market. This is a 90 minute chart. Okay, and I'm looking at over about 15 to 18 days. And you, again, you can do all that on barchart.com. The, the bond market between the 5th and the 8th and 7th, in other words, uh, there was a failure swing that you can clearly see in the 30 year treasury bond market. So, in other words, we had a failed higher high. Now, when this takes place, by itself, it doesn't mean anything. But if you're looking for things to justify a long on the dollar and you see a lower high on the 30 year bond market, then we go to the lower time frame interest rate and we're looking at another opportunity comparing the same highs. This one is relatively unchanged. We'll just say it's flat to neutral. So it didn't make a lower high in, in comparison, but it still didn't make a, a considerable higher high either. And finally, for the five year, we can see that there was clearly a higher high formed on the five year interest rate or short term. So on the short term curve, we made a higher run on the five year note, an unchanged high on the 10 year note and a lower high on the 30 year. Now by itself, that highlights there's a shift in the interest rate market. Now, what did we first start with this module? That interest rates are the number one leading driver for price action in the currency markets. There's nothing else that drives markets more wild in the currencies than the interest rates. That's, the, that's what makes the whole world go around. So if we understand that we're seeing a divergence between the actual underlying five year, 10 year and 30 year interest rate markets, you can see that shift is pronounced. It's, you can clearly see it. You don't go into looking at the bond market just for these types of scenarios. You have to have a predetermined idea of what the market that you're about to trade should see in terms of bullishness or bearishness. That brings us back to the US dollar index. The same reference point in time between the 5th and the 8th or so, we saw that the dollar index went lower, made a lower low, and it traded down into a significant price level. Now, this is on a closing basis, and that's all you need, but the point is we're seeing a significant divergence between the lower low on the dollar index and that of the 30-year treasury bond failing to make that higher high as it should have made comparably. When price moves into previous levels of institutional order flow, we as traders have to anticipate dynamic price movement. That looks like this. And we talked about this this week in the live sessions. We had an old order block back in uh, midpoint of November. It was the last down candle that had already been traded back down into it in November 15th. One more time and uh, it bounced away from that. But we traded all the way back down this week during the 8th of December just to get back into that 99.50 level and it was strongly rejected and the market rallied hard on the dollar index which obviously would do what for foreign currencies it would give us reasons to trust bearish order blocks bearish turtle soups or return back to fair value closing in uh, big ranges that drop lower once those are closed in after a retracement higher we could look for a continuation and roll over for lower prices on foreign currencies. But this previous order block is what you would be looking for at that moment when price trades into that order block. You want to take a look at the interest rate markets to see if there's any clue that the smart money is working that level. 
so many people ask me, how do I validate what order block to trade off of? And I just told you with this teaching, if you can see the interest rate divergence or interest rate triad by looking at those 30, 10 and five year, if there's a divergence between the three and price is hitting in a specific order block on the dollar index, that gives you the green light to go in and start refining the idea on that trade because it's most likely a high probability setup. So if we saw a bullishness for the dollar index, then obviously we would be looking for bearish situations for the fiber and the euro USD. We had a level of buy stops indicated before the week started. And the market came all the way back up to an old reference point at 108.65, which is an old low. If you go back farther on your charts, I'll leave that for your homework. But if you take a look at what's happened here, the market rallied back above that 108.15 to 108.20, clearing out the buy stops, rolled all the way up through to 108.65, trading back to an old low. That's not shown on this chart. Again, I'll leave that to you for your own homework. But the selling scenario was justified because we've seen the bullishness on the dollar. And that's the reason why we were expecting the dollar to keep pressing higher this week all through the rest of the week. And it kept doing that. And as it relates to the foreign currencies, it just kept driving them lower. And cable failed to make a higher high when euro dollar made the higher high and dollar made the lower low. So it's not always just simply looking for a divergence in one specific location or one asset. You have to blend a couple of things sometimes to get to understanding what the smart money is doing. You can see that the market has a couple different opportunities to be short relative to the strong dollar. But what makes that strong dollar so significant is that it had a divergence in the interest rate triad. So 30 year, 10 year, five year had a failure swing at the moment that the dollar was trading down there. So once you see that, it gets everything back in sync where the market's going to be driving in one direction or another based on what direction the interest rates are going. So if the interest rate markets are dropping lower, that means interest rates are going to go higher, which means the interest rate's going to drive the dollar index higher. And if the dollar index is going to go higher, that's going to drive foreign currencies lower. And everything fits together like a, uh, like a, like a cog. And, you know, and all the gears come together and they start turning everything makes sense but it doesn't always work like that sometimes there's a shift that takes place on a longer term basis and it may mess up things on a short term time basis and you'll have to allow some of those things to come up in your trading and just trust the fact that over a long period of time these scenarios will repeat themselves and when it does it'll give you a plethora of trading opportunities all right so what do we do with this information you know, what can we do to, to build some kind of an action plan so we can use the information in a context where it helps us, not just talk about it in hindsight? Well, we have to use the points of focus taught in the first month of the mentorship. When price action trades to a focus point like a order block, a liquidity pool, a liquidity void or fair value gap, you refer to the interest rate triad and the dollar index. This will confirm smart money is behind your trade idea. If there is no obvious indication that they are moving large funds, pass on the trade idea and look for new ones that do. So what do I mean by that? If you're looking to be a buyer of dollar, the interest rate market is going to show you the divergence that I showed here today with a failed higher high among all three. They should all be moving higher highs if the dollar is moving lower. But if we see a bearish tone on the dollar index, this is what you would see. You would see the interest rate markets making a lower low, another one making a lower low, but eventually one of them will fail to make that lower low. And what that'll do, that'll validate the sell signals that you're getting in the dollar index at a bearish order block, at a um, old high that's being ran out for a liquidity pool or trading up into a fair value gap, closing in a range, then you can expect to see that dollar roll lower and interest rates on these three to start trading higher in their price, which means interest rates will be dropping because as these uh, interest rates on charts, as they move up or trend higher, that's actually interest rates declining and that's gonna be bearish for dollar. 
So hopefully this has given you one more insight to understanding how to validate the order block liquidity pools and liquidity voids and fair value gaps. It's not simply just looking for every up candle to sell into or every down candle to buy into. You want to look behind the scenes and get closer to the underpinnings of the marketplace because the smart money is going to make a very clear fingerprint when they're in there. And it's going to be seen in a shift in the interest rate markets like this, and it validates your setups. So until I talk to you next time, I wish you good luck and good trading.